Howdy and welcome back. You're watching the third and final installment of our three-part series. In part one, we learned how the HTTP request response protocol works with routes, controllers, actions, and models to deliver a RESTful JSON CRUD API. In part two, we took those concepts and built the API from scratch. In this episode, we'll explore sales, blueprint, actions, and routes, a powerful combination of functionality that are often used but not always fully understood. The goal of this episode is to show you what the blueprints are all about and how to use them to make your programming life a bit easier. So where are we going to start? First, a small warning here. This episode relies heavily on the previous two screencasts. So if you start to experience dizziness, tightness in the chest, or depression, I highly recommend you review those screencasts. Let's take a look at the roadmap of what we'll be covering in this episode. So there are four pre-built blueprint actions, find, create, update, and destroy. As we'll see in a minute, these four actions map directly to the CRUD API we built in the last episode. There are also three blueprint route types, blueprint actions routes, blueprint rest routes, and blueprint shortcuts routes. I want to make one thing very clear from the beginning. Blueprint actions and blueprint routes are virtualized in the sense they're not explicitly defined in controller files like sleepcontroller.js or the routes.js file. Instead, they're built up when sales starts using sales lift. But as usual, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's start with seeing what happens when we combine blueprint actions and blueprint rest routes. So in the last episode, I went over in excruciating detail how to make a RESTful JSON CRUD API. The goal of the API was to track our sleep patterns, specifically how much we sleep each night and the quality of that sleep. The best way to show you how blueprints help you automate the creation of an API is to repeat the process of building the RESTful JSON CRUD API, however, add the power of blueprints. So let's jump in here and create a new MySleep project. I'm in the terminal and I will create the project using sales new MySleep using the linker flag. Next, I'll change into the MySleep folder and create a sleep model and controller using sales generate sleep. Finally, I'll start the project using sales lift. Okay, we're done. The API is complete. But you don't believe me. And after all we've been through, well, I guess I'm just going to have to prove it to you. Seriously, though. Everything we did in the last episode was just built with those three commands. Let's open up a browser and once again using the Postman Chrome extension, I'll make similar requests that we made in the last episode that relate to a CRUD API. Let's start with the create portion of CRUD. I'll add an instance to the sleep model using the HTTP verb post to the path slash sleep, adding two parameters, hour slept and sleep quality. After sending the request, the API returns our newly created record as JSON. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make four model instances inserting different values for hours slept and sleep quality. Next, we'll try the read portion of CRUD. So let's get all the model instances by making a get request to the path slash sleep. After sending the request, the API returned all five instances of our model. Next, let's make a get request to the path slash sleep slash two. The API returns a single instance of the model with an ID of two. Finally, let's try a request with some criteria. We'll look for any model instances with an ID not equal to four, limited to three model instances and in descending order. So after making the request, the API returns three instances of the model in descending order. Things are looking up for my assertion that our API was indeed complete. Next up, we'll try the update portion of the CRUD API. I'm going to make a put request to the path slash sleep slash three with the attribute added underscore a trib equals to 12. After making the request, the API returns our instance of the model that has an ID of three with our added attribute formatted as JSON. Finally, we'll try the delete portion of our CRUD API. Once again, within Postman, I'll make a delete request to the path slash sleep slash five. After sending the request, the API responds with the model instance it just deleted formatted as JSON. 
Let's take a quick check of the controller we created in controllers slash sleepcontroller.js. Yep, nothing in it. Next, let's look at the config slash routes.js file. Pretty much the same, nothing in there except the home route. So at this point, you're probably wondering how in the heck are we able to use the same RESTful API endpoints that we used in the last episode, but without any explicit actions or routes? Is it mind control? The really short answer is that we're using Blueprint Actions and Blueprint REST routes to automate the process of building the API. The next question is, how do they work? When Sales initially starts using Sales Lift, Sales looks to see if you have any controllers defined. In our example, we have one controller, the Sleep Controller. Sales then provides access to Blueprint Actions for the Sleep Controller as if we built them in the controller ourselves. Sales also automatically creates Blueprint REST routes that are identical to the routes we explicitly created in the last episode. When combined together, the Blueprint Actions and Blueprint REST routes give us the exact functionality we had in our manually created JSON RESTful CRUD API without having to create anything other than a project, an empty controller, and an empty model. So where are the Blueprint Actions actually defined? Okay, nerd alert here, and when I say nerd alert, I'm starting with myself. Uh, you can see what the actions look like by taking a look at the sales source on GitHub. Looking through these actions, they look very similar to the ones we created in the last episode. The difference is that sales handles all of this in the background, creating the necessary blueprint REST routes that connect the actions to our controllers automatically. Again, this is all happening in memory without you having to explicitly create anything. Also remember that the MySleep project we've been working through uses a single controller. The Blueprint Actions and Blueprint REST routes are not limited to a single controller. So for a more complex project with multiple controllers, Sales Blueprint REST routes are built automatically for all of the controllers. You can, of course, override any of the actions by explicitly creating one of the actions in your controller. For example, I'll go back to the sleep controller and create a find action that simply responds with, I'm your new explicit find action. Let's restart the server and go back into the browser. I can still use the create, update, and delete actions. However, now when I make a get request to the path slash sleep, I now receive our message. So with sales, you get the Blueprint Actions and the Blueprint REST routes. But wait, there's more! Sorry, couldn't resist that. In addition, sales also provides Blueprint Action routes, not to be confused with Blueprint Actions. Blueprint Action routes speed up back-end development and shorten the development workflow by eliminating the need to manually bind custom controller actions to request through routes. So when sales starts via sales lift, sales analyzes your controllers, and if it finds an explicit action in a controller, it will bind get, post, put, and delete routes to the explicit action. For example, in our sleep project, I've added the action query to the sleep controller. So when sales starts, it will automatically build the following blueprint action routes in memory. So let's see this in action. I'll open up a browser and make a get request to the path slash sleep slash query. The query action responds with a view that can be found in views slash sleep slash query dot ejs. The important takeaway here is that when I created a new action, in this case the query action, I didn't have to create a route to bind a request to that action. By using Blueprint Actions routes, Sales did this for me automatically. So let's go back to our Blueprint roadmap. So far, we've covered Blueprint CRUD actions, as well as Blueprint REST routes and Blueprint action routes. The final Blueprint route type is Blueprint shortcuts. Blueprint shortcuts build routes that allow you to use the Blueprint actions from a browser. I use Blueprint shortcuts during development as a handy way to manipulate my underlying model. The best way to see how this works is through an example. So from within the browser, I can grab a list of all my model instances using the URL slash sleep. I can create a new model instance using the URL slash sleep slash create and adding the parameters sleep quality and hours slept. 
I can also update that same instance using the URL slash sleep slash update with the ID of 6 and changing hours slept from 10 to 9. Finally, I'll delete the model instance by using the URL slash sleep slash destroy slash 6. One bit of caution, blueprint shortcuts were not designed to be used in production. So how do we disable parts of the blueprints? The blueprint routes and blueprint actions are completely configurable. That is, they can be disabled simply by setting the values of actions, rest, and or shortcuts to false in the config slash controllers.js file. You can have even finer granularity by setting the same values in the underscore config object within each controller, which will override what is in the controllers.js file. Okay, we have a bunch of routes here, but how do they all fit together? So all of these different routes have an order of precedent or rank. When a request comes in, Sales first checks the explicit routes in routes.js. Next, it will look to see if there's a match in the blueprint actions routes, followed by the blueprint rest routes, and finally, Sales will see if there's a match in the blueprint shortcuts routes. So if there's a git request to the root route, Sales will route it via routes.js to render views slash home slash index.ejs. If there's a git request to slash sleep slash query, sales finding no match in routes.js will look to the blueprint action routes and finding a match will route the request to the explicit query action of the sleep controller. If there's a delete request to slash sleep slash five, sales finding no match in routes.js or blueprint action routes will look to the blueprint rest routes and finding a match will route the request to the blueprint destroy action returning a JSON object if successful. And finally, if there's a request to get slash sleep slash update slash two with some params, sales finding no match in routes.js, blueprint action nor rest routes, will look to the blueprint shortcut routes and finding a match will route the request to the blueprint cred update action, passing in any params to the model's update method, returning a JSON object if successful. In this series, we've learned the concepts of how to use the HTTP request response protocol with routes, controllers, actions, and models to deliver a RESTful JSON CRUD API. Using those concepts, we built the API from scratch, and hopefully after this episode, it becomes apparent that Blueprint actions and routes are really about automation. That is, eliminating the necessity of writing, at least initially, repetitive actions and routes during development. We've covered a lot of material in these three series, and I hope you found it helpful. As always, thanks for watching, and if you get a chance, follow me on Twitter at Earl Nathan.